Keep watching Hasbro Pulse for more information about when you can add a Sergeant Slaughter G.I. Joe action figure to your classified collection. All right, maggots. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Yo, Joe! Yo, Joe! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and uh, I'm in lazy mode. Don't get me wrong, I have all my notes and pictures going on, but... I don't know. I was this close this morning to just being like, I just want to lay in bed. But I didn't, because honestly, I, I really, really like doing this. I just have nothing to, you know, no talking point to lead us into talking about toys, which is the whole point of this anyway, so I, I would not blame anybody for just <laughs> skipping right by. So many toys! Oh my god! <laughs> if you've been waiting for the Boss Fight Studio Strawberry Shortcake line to go up for pre-order this week, you're in luck. Huckleberry Pie, Orange Blossom, Lime Chiffon, and Strawberry Shortcake herself are all now available for pre-order on Boss Fight Store. In the picture, there are quite a few accessories, including their pet companions, but if you read the description, there's even more stuff. There, it says that there's alternate facial expressions and then different hands to interact with the various accessories that each come with. It also reiterates that they are scented. Then they also said that each would be six inches tall to the top of the hat. Well, varies. Somewhere close to six inches tall. Basically, if you're an 80s fiend, this is the strawberry shortcake to have in your little shrine to that decade. $40 each expected sometime early 2023, somewhere in there. Speaking of 80s nostalgia, there are more Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse figures to talk about, more pictures to comb over this week. A lot of these we've seen before, they're just extra shots, views, <laughs> not so great posing, but I like seeing more of the figure, but there are a couple of new things here too. I haven't bought a She-Ra figure since Classics. Has there been a She-Ra figure since Classics? Either way, I'm excited about the Masterverse version. Although I cannot decide which one I like better. I didn't expect to like the masked head so much. But that sheerness of the cape, that's just off-putting, where you can see right through it. Everything I just said also applies to Catra, although instead of having alternate heads for the masked and unmasked look, it looks like hers just kind of slides up and down on her face. For Beastman, I am really liking the new Eternia concept, where they take those vintage designs and just tweak them a little, modernize them up a bit. Which I guess you could say about 2000X and Revelation, but for some reason this keeps even more of the base concept, you know? Because each figure, well, most of the figures give us options to have that classic look or to have the new Eternia look. Initial pictures, I didn't think I would like the fur harness with the big old spikes and then the animal hat that he's wearing, but I do. <laughs> I don't know why. I see more of it and I think, well, maybe that's how I'm going to display this one. But if you're not into that, there's also the option for the classic harness. That does leave the little cloth crotch cover hanging down, but there's got to be an option to remove that, right? Whether intentional or not. Either it comes off or, you know, sharp blade, scissors. Battle Armor He-Man continues that new Eternia style, I guess we're going to call it with the armored bits and bobs to enhance the iconic chest look that we all know and love. I think when this was first shown, I speculated that there would be an unbearded head for that full-on vintage look. There's not. Is it any surprise that I was wrong about something? You cannot predict what a toy company is going to do, especially Mattel. I'm good with this though, which may or may not pertain to the beard itself, but I was always a fan of the battle armor. Then there's the 40th anniversary He-Man, and I was super, okay, I'm blowing the, the whole point here. I was super excited about this, even though in the initial pictures, we saw how it looked overall. But now that we're seeing closer pictures, hmm, don't get me wrong, I love the silhouette this cuts. The head is larger to fit the body better. They've widened the chest, up and down hinge on a sword holding hand. Mm -mm -mm. Hell, I even love the Hey Abbott hairstyle. Hey Abbott! But the doe eyes just plants it too firmly into the 80s. And then the shading, it comes off as more mud than muscle definition. At a base level, I do get it. I don't mind muscle shading, some definition. And it does match the wash in the boots with the fur. 
the crotch, the hair, it blends in, but ooh, they went way too dark, way too heavy. Maybe I'll get it for a repaint because again, I, I love the look of this, just not the execution. Then there's Sun Man, who before the past few months, I knew nothing about, but the more action figure I see, the more I like the design. The colors just pop, and then there's the wings. Translucent, yellow, and they made them articulated. Oh, baby! It just makes for a good looking toy. <laughs> That's really what we're all about here. For new reveals, at least I think it's new, I don't think we've seen Hero before, right? This kicks back into the Revelation cast, which is rumored to have more figures coming in the future. And hey, I can't drop about that since we do have a few Revelation figures already. But good grief, that staff takes up more space than most of the other accessories we've seen so far combined. Hey, I'm exaggerating, right? The Beastman stuff. The, the, you name that thing. But that's a big old staff. Just... I'm 99% sure we haven't seen Zodak before though. Again, this cuts back into that, and I can't remember if this was labeled New Eternia, but it's that same concept. There's your vintage inspired look from the original cartoon, well, like the original figures, spruced up a bit with add-on parts. I'm not sure how those shoulder pads plug in. If you zoom in real close, you can see the peg is mounted on the back. And if you zoom in on Zodak's back, you can almost see some kind of divot or hole underneath the strap. But he's got the Zodak gun, and then he has the 2000X staff that breaks down for things, and he's got the holster. I'm loving this. I really am. And plus, since he's wearing a helmet, the head is larger than what we've seen in the line so far, which is one of my biggest gripes. Over the past few weeks, McFarlane Toys has slowly debuted their DC Multiverse Blackest Night line, and was it last week I speculated that they were waiting to show off the rumored Build-A-Figure before full-on solicitations went up, and in this case, I was right. It was weird. robo do -no. Is that the first time I've ever said that? Ooh. First there was Black Lantern Batman because there's always got to be a Batman. Then there was Captain San Antonio <laughs> or General South Australia. I've never looked at this design and thought, oh, it's an S and an A, but it is. Oh, and looking at it, there's a faint O too if you squint your eyes a little bit. Clark's a fan of Sons of Anarchy? Next was Deathstorm, who somehow looks more awesome as a Black Lantern. Probably because it leans harder into that mystical comic book undead look, whereas Batman and Superman are just generic zombie versions of themselves. Just with costume flourishes and, well, like, extra letters. Kyle was the big reveal, though. When it's McFarlane Toys, they usually go towards, you know, the oddball designs. Or something a little cooler, a little sexier. But this... This is just a DC superhero in one of their more iconic costumes. I've seen complaints about the color of the costume, and I have to agree. It's definitely more in the realm of Sweet Pea when it should be over closer to spinach, maybe? Little too lemon, not enough lime. The one I was looking forward to the most, though, was the rumored Atrocitus Build-A-Figure, and oh, Todd did not disappoint. Like I predicted, I want the whole wave just to put an intimidating Red Lantern up on the shelf. The initial reveal, as always, was a moody picture, and it left us wondering, well, how big is it? And then the solicitations went up, and oh, the parts in the packages with the figures, look at the size of those legs. And the torso next to Kyle. So I stopped and thought, oh, too big. But then I saw the head was about the same size as Deathstorm's, and then they showed pictures of Atrocitus mingling with the rest, and yeah, I'm okay with it. It's a chunk of plastic, but it's also Atrocitus. He can be a big, beefy boy. $25 a piece should be out in August. NECA has made it so easy to talk about their new releases because they have DGDX doing stop motion for each of those reveals. All I have to do is, hey, watch this. Live from New York City, this is a Channel 3 special report. Good evening, I'm April O'Neil broadcasting live with some breaking news. <laughs> what was that? Pardon the interruption, Miss O'Neil, but I'll be taking over this broadcast to bring you the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universal Monster. It's April as the bride. Observe the monster's outfit with cloth ripped straight from the headlines. Her bag adorned with lock and real chain. Her vintage microfilm staff, which will help her broadcast again. <laughs> and let's not forget the bride's beautiful portrait with both scars, pale blue skin, and iconic hairdo. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Universal Monsters, a colonial as the bride. Comes with everything you see here. Bride! <laughs> Okay, movie style April is the Bride of Frankenstein in their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover with Universal Monsters, and it's a good choice. Totally works. She looks great, but for some reason, I can't help thinking that this doesn't lean as hard into the concept as the ones we've seen before. There's Raph, there's Leo, 
There's Mikey. At the same time, the Bride of Frankenstein wasn't as monstrous as the rest of the Universal Monsters. Plus, we recognize this face. It's Judith Hogue. The likeness is there. So it humanizes the figure and the character to where, it's, yeah, it's messing with my brain. It makes me think it's slightly out of place, but the, the design's there. It works. It's not like I'm going to pass on this thing. It'll look great with the rest. In fact, I just opened Raph. It's awesome. I also need to see more of the, you know, traditional pretty promotional pictures. Those haven't hit yet, as far as I can tell. I haven't seen it. No solicitations, no pre-orders yet, but I figure that'll be soon. Something I didn't think I'd be interested in is the Bandai SH Figuarts Buzz Lightyear from the upcoming movie Lightyear. First off, I don't know the full context here. I think this movie is set within the Toy Story universe to give backstory to Buzz Lightyear, which in the original Toy Stories was a toy based on a cartoon, I thought, and maybe the cartoons based on this movie that we're gonna see way after the, t I don't know. At least that's how I see it. That's what I get out of it. Seeing this, it makes me want to know more. There's still a cartooniness to it, especially around the head because it's based on an animated feature, but not as cartoony as the original movies. I'm breaking my own mind here. It, there still is a realism factor and that, is what interests me the most, at least when it comes to this figure. I've always wanted a Buzz Lightyear on my live action shelves. So maybe I'll get this and swap out with an actor head. Dave suggested Chris Evans, since he's voicing the character in the movie. And it's not like I don't have a lot of Chris Evans heads hanging around. That's just me though. I'm not trying to take anything away from the figure itself because as is, it looks good. But they didn't stop there. There's also the SH Figure Arts Spider-Man No Way Home Iron Spider. I've drifted away from the Bandai MCU stuff, so I'd never sat down and counted just how many Spider-Mans they've made over the years. If I'm correct, this is the eighth version, which doesn't sound like too much when it comes to Spider-Man, but when you realize that they've backed off a lot for their Marvel figures, just making like the main characters, the big names, that's a lot of Spider-Mans. This is also the third Iron Spider version they've made. There was the first from Infinity War, which kind of looked more concept art, didn't have a shine to it. But then it was almost an apology figure for in-game Final Battle, where they did make them shiny. And I think that's mostly the same body here. They just added some blue to the eyes, brightened the red, and tightened up the gold. But again, like Buzz, I'm not hacking on it. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I'm just waxing toyetic. Both figures are around $65. Buzz is scheduled for June, Spider-Man for August. Iron Spider, Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Diving back into that big old green debate, Mezco finally, finally solicited their 112th collective Doctor Doom. We have been, well, okay, at least I have been waiting for this since they put up their Fantastic Four. Get the four? You gotta have Doom. Hell, before that, because I've always said that Doctor Doom is a perfect candidate for Mezcofication. There's the plastic, there's the soft goods. <laughs> Two great tastes that go great together. And I love this. I really, really do. I could go on about all the accessories like two heads and three mask options or a pair of belts with various pouch configurations or the spell book with actual pages. How about all the hands, including the stun shocker effects? The weapon with the interchangeable blast effects or maybe show Doom's magic side with the spell effects. Rocket thruster add-ons and my favorite, Dr. Doom's personal headlight and turn signal harness. Doom is turning left, Cretans. No, it's a power cosmic siphon that you know, may or may not work really, really well with another company's upcoming Galactus. Ooh. All those accessories are awesome, but for me, it's the figure. It just looks fantastic. It's just Dr. Doom. They say there's metal components, which makes me like it even more because I'm a big fan of metal, but they don't say which components. So I'm left guessing like, is it the joints? Is it on the inside? Is something overlaid? Who knows? And I have seen the gripes about how dark the green is, but... That, I don't know, I feel like it It feels classic, modern at the same time. If they had went with that bright green, it would have put it into comic book supervillain, which he is, but that's not the Mezco style, you know? They go for a little realism. Then there's also complaints about the price and those are completely justified. All the accessories and add-ons and metal and light up feature, that pushed it up to $155. That is high, no doubt, but you have to assess your own situation, what you're willing to pay for something you want. Me, I've laid off a lot of Mezco lately in anticipation for Dr. Doom coming around. So I was saving my pennies. Again, 
you gotta do you. Hopefully it'll stick to its 2023 release date, but we'll see. Oh, but you know what else? It's time for Metacom's monthly Moffex reveals. This time around, we have a couple of hammer wielders who just happen to like red capes. In the Marvel corner, you have the Mighty Thor. I had forgotten that they were doing more than just X-Men and Spider-Man. You know, the two I'm excited about. But I also grabbed that Iron Man. And on first glance, I thought this will go perfect with that because look at this thing. It's about as classic as you can get. I say it a lot with Mafex, but this is like the comic page coming to plastic life. The colors are clean and just pop. The slightly larger head, but muscle powerful body, definitely old school feeling. Accessories include alternate gritting teeth face and several hammer options. I like that they're not even messing around with hands that would go inside the hoop on it. They made those integrated to several different handles. But there's also a traditional C hand in case you want to choke up on the hammer. Then it comes with probably one of my favorite accessories, the spinning hammer. This is how I would spin the hammer. We've seen it several times from other companies. Hell, in fact, didn't it just come with a Captain America? But this is Thor. He needed it. Not gonna lie, when this first crossed my screen, I thought, need that. But then my eyes slowly went up to my Marvel Legends classic Avengers display, which I am not joking, is just right here, right above my screen. And I saw the 80th anniversary Thor with a Rebel 10 custom cape with the wires in it and everything. And changed my mind. I was like, well, okay, maybe I don't need this. I'm pretty happy with that. Flip side, my Mattel DC Universe Classic Steel is in dire need of replacement, and Metacom's got me covered. Because in the DC corner, there is the return of Superman Steel. The muscle build, the metallic armor bits, the light blue to the body itself, it's just so pleasing to the eye. I love looking at these pictures. Never thought of him as having the cartoon Destro thing where he can make facial expressions while armored up but he's also a character in a universe of superheroes and villains and magic and powers and uh, I'm okay with this. Plus it seems to match the art that I've looked at. This picture though, I did get heavy male stripper vibes. Then I realized he was holding the hammer above his head. Accessories are a little more sparse here with just extra hands, boot blasts, and then the hammer. But that's okay, that's all Steel needs. Maybe that extra money is going into paint apps, hopefully. Because I want this same ethereal type blue glow look to it. Both are around $70, scheduled for March 2023. But we know how it is when it comes to Mafex. And there's some Marvel Legends news. Didn't we just have a bunch of that a week or so back? This week we saw pre-orders for the Black Panther Legacy Wave, which is essentially getting older figures back out there, but with some paint tweaks. Good if you missed them the first time around or you want an upgrade. How many times have I said this in the past few weeks? But if you don't need them, pass on by. You don't have to buy everything, especially these days. As far as I can tell, T'Challa is pretty damn close to the M'Baku Build-A-Figure wave release. Killmonger has a lot more gold paint on the head, which is accurate, but probably shouldn't be so saturated. Shuri gets the proper colors to her clothing this time around, with the purples and golds popping more than the drab original release. Same goes for Nakia, although it's more subtle with all the random lines and dots. That better resembles what we saw in the movie. But there's also a slight upgrade to this figure because they changed out the boots or at least the shin part that comes from an mcu scarlet witch which i would have never figured out i read that online somewhere it's all <laughs> robo still don't know then what's a toy drop without exclusives this time around at walmart we get vibranium black panther they love that vibranium black panther don't they hard to tell at first glance but the purple power effects have been shifted around a bit especially up at the mask but the silvers down at the boots that's also been removed and then target's going to get mbaku who was a Build-A-Figure in a previous wave. Here, there's just more depth to the paint, more contrast, and I think the head is a big improvement over the original figure, which can't be said about all these figures. I think Killmonger doesn't look quite as good as the original. I don't know if that's a change in photo reel, but then like Nakia looks better than she did before. All in all, it's a nice primer for what I expect to be more Black Panthers coming in the near future. Or could this legacy line be like Star Wars Archive, giving us reissues of older figures with updated looks. Price point of $25 each though, without the build of figure, mostly, well, it's all reissue, right? Mm, that seems a little high. Little dip into Transformers, the Generation Selects Voyager Cyclonus went up for pre-order this week. Just words stuck together. I'm not a big Transformers buyer. I just pick a character and I buy it. For Cyclonus, same figure as before, but there's a very vintage feel with 
the extra colors thrown in there, and then are those decals? Or decals, depending on what space you're occupying in the world at the moment. Even with those, there's a nostalgia factor. As a kid, fumbling around trying to put them on, mostly being crooked, or watching your parents stumble through it. Oh no, that's crooked. Oh no, that's crooked. Oh no, that's crooked. I've been on the fence about the vintage toy-inspired Galvatron, but this pushes me off into that direction because I just like the extra flair. I do have to point out that the landing gear on the shins, there's no way those open up without tearing some sticker. And then up on the thighs, the decals lay on an uneven plane or on a seam line of some kind. So it may get torn up, but at the same time, there's a nostalgia factor to that too. Remember your old toys and thinking, oh, the sticker. All in all though, my favorite is the color contrast. It just makes various parts and pieces stand out better. $39 set to release in August. But I think the big news of the week was G.I. Joe, right? They did a kick-ass live stream. Unfortunately, I was at the dentist at that moment, but as soon as I got out of the dentist in the parking lot, it was like, mm, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm looking at my hand a lot today. Oh, 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 look at that, a hand. For Fan First Tuesday, they started off with new product. And I say new loosely. It's new, but it's also mostly reused because they started off with another Snake Eyes and Timber set. Everyone knows my Snake Eyes is Commando, at least in look. I don't know his underwear situation, but them taking the ninja look, adding kind of that military green to the pants, and then some lace-up boots, they snagged me. And really, Timber is the star of this set, both first release and second release. That is such a great little figure. So getting it in white, I don't even mind because... I can pick my favorite and then have some wolf action happening somewhere else. Then for Walmart's retro card line, which we haven't even seen release yet, they announced Zartan. I think that classic inspired itch was scratched when I got the PulseCon exclusive, but that's very easy for me to say today. Not so easy if and when I ever see this on the pegs. That's a complete different story. Same goes for Storm Shadow, who looks essentially the same as that figure who hasn't seen full release yet but with the ungloved hands and the more basic arm wraps. Is that enough to push me into buying another one? I don't know, again, we will see whenever this comes around. I don't have to make those kind of decisions today, thankfully, but I can be thinking about it just looking at the pictures because those are also coming on those stupid, silly, beautiful retro cards that we may not see much more of in the future. So I may have to snag them while I can, if I can. Walmart. Tiger Force Duke, also just a repaint, and honestly, it's ugly. The ram is an eyesore. That mouth thing should have been up on the, the front. I hate this. I really, really do. Because I love it so much. <laughs> because it's ugly. Oh, I don't need this, which I guess we could say about any of this stuff. Except for, you know, our own inner happiness, but I do kind of need it. It looks nasty nasty the blue ninja two pack is a cool concept again with all the reuse i'm not sure how i feel about the female being a kiko's body because it does have its limitations but at the same time this looks good you know what throws me the male ninja has the overlays adding some bulk to it the female doesn't have any of that if they had added some straps or or something just to spruce it up a bit, I think I'd like this a lot better. The new heads look cool though, and the masked heads even better. The big new reveal was Sergeant Slaughter, <laughs> hands down. <laughs> this was the, oh, a new character who's a main character. Well, yeah, it's Sergeant Slaughter, but you know what I mean. They said the whistle and the glasses and the hat would all be removable, so I can't wait to see what's all under there. I can't wait to see an actual factory sample. Which leads me into figures that went up for pre-order that we had only seen as digital renders before. Seeing them as, you know, pretty promotional pictures, as something held in hand, it made me more excited about each and every one of them. The target exclusives of Tiger Force Bazooka and Rakondo, along with the Python Patrol Cobra Officer, were all announced to go up for pre-order later that day. And they did, and then they stayed up. In fact, last I looked, which was about an hour ago, they were still up, which is crazy for a Target exclusive. Yeah, it's not the main looks for each of these characters. I mean, the the officer's yellow shirt, gaudy, and then the battle cat pelt pants on both Rakondo and Bazooka may turn people off. But I kind of like the Cringer camo. It's not so apparent on Rakondo, Bazooka, it stands out. But that's the thing about these new Target exclusives. They Have they said it, that Tiger Force and Python Patrol 
they will get, well, the Cobra officer, of course, has different versions already out, but Bazooka and Rakondo is going to come to the main line eventually. I mean, it's just a repaint away from being a more iconic look for each of them. So maybe that's why they're still up. People are thinking, hey, I'll just grab the main line version later. And then Target's happy, Hasbro's happy, we're happy. Well, we're never happy, but you know, more figures. But speaking of mainline, Zorana, Dusty, and Crimson Guard also all went up for pre-order at all the usual places. And along with that, we saw promotional images. And like I say, I kind of like that they're using digital renders for the initial reveal, but it doesn't lock in here until I see some plastic or factory sample or something. For Zorana, the alternate hairdo is awesome. It's a nice option, but I also like the weapon. I mean, that blade is right there by me. I love Dusty's overall no-nonsense appearance with just the camo, but I, I'm not sure how I feel about the hat thing. It comes off very cone-headed, and I know the hair sculpted up under there. Maybe when I get it, I can dremel it out a little bit, make it sit lower, but will that come down over the eyes? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But the Crimson Guard caught me off guard. That's, that's terrible. I like True Builders, but I've never really paid attention to these guys. It was the poses here that sold me. There's a regal feel to it, but they're also not afraid to get down and dirty. And they have the training to back it up completely. At least that's how I feel looking at the pictures. Mainline pre-orders are $25 a pop. They are scheduled for March of 2023, but I think we all expect those to show up sooner. Like we've been seeing a lot of other Hasbro releases where they projected really far out. I think they're doing that just to stay on the safe side. If it happens before then, yay, everybody's happy. Unless you were budgeting for it to be way out there, then it kind of sucks. But me, I'm like, early toys, gimme. No release date for the Target figures, but they all went up onto the site for $22.99. Hmm. And that's it for this week. You know that's a lie. There's probably something that's been posted in the past hour. But if I missed anything, we'll come back around next week. If you're wanting to see any of these pictures up close without me all, oh, look at that. It's hands. I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. There's been a distinct lack of Star Wars in the past few weeks. I'm hoping that changes next week because Hasbro announced a Fan First Wednesday. I'm fully expecting their version of the, hey, we're switching the packaging to less plastic. But I'm hoping to see something new. Give me something new, please. I'm okay with the repaints that give us other characters from lesser known medias, but I also need some mainline characters. I want some important big names that we don't have yet, or some prequel Jedis, or something. Something different, something new. And since that's happening on a Wednesday, which is my usual record day, I'll probably be posting another ramble next week, just just talking about toys. If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> I feel like we're about to fight, but we wouldn't fight because there's much, much love for the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com, but wherever you may be watching this, I always catch you on the foosh. And I've been feeling the rut when it comes to reviews. What do y'all want to see? I want to change things up. I'm kind of tired of the, hey, here's the package. Hey, here's me open it. Here's the toy. Here's what I don't like about it. Here's what I do like about it. Articulation, accessories, size, thoughts. It's a very stale formula at this point. I'm, I'm feeling the need to change it up. I don't know, it's different. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, different, something that gets me more excited about it again. Not that I'm not excited about opening toys, you know how that goes, but it just feels like, well, here we go. <sighs> At this point, I'd much rather do this, which you can tell, look how excited I am, just. <sighs> yeah, different.